Well, now is that moment, isn't it? Let's see how many of us, 45 of us gathered from all over the country to say, what about these virtual meetings? I mean, how much impact can they really have? So it's an experiment and we're exploring together. And then again on Thursday, what is possible if we do this in a virtual setting? For me, I had to take my time with this. I wasn't at all sure that Wild would translate into small separate screens or that the sled dog stories would still hold the impact they do. It's a really different skill set to do this than to be face to face and read audiences and all the things that we love to do as speakers and interact with you. I'm happy to say, yeah, it's working. It is working. Uh, for me, speaking to small groups or large global events so far, the feedback has been that people can still laugh and cry and learn a lot and connect and engage. Thank goodness for that because boy, do we need that now. We need it more than we have maybe other times. My name is Chris Heater and this is Summit, my sleepy yet still nice to have speaking companion. Uh, someone last night at a speaking event I did called him a Zoom therapy dog. So that's his new role. He's becoming a virtual sensation even through his sleeping or stretching or yawning or leaving. I do this on purpose. I do it on purpose because I want it to feel like when you're with me, we're sitting on the couch together having a conversation. It's the intimacy we get to have when we don't get to be face to face. So it's all right here. If he freaks out at a garbage truck, then he's gonna freak out. I do not believe this is time for polished perfection. Right now is to embrace all of the mess and all of the goodness, goodness we can find together, even if we have to be separate. So Summit will snore through this and maybe stretch or who knows, but he gives me somebody to interact with at least. I speak about being wild at work. And here's what I mean by wild. Wild is who you are. It's you at your essence. There's nothing to improve or fix or stretch or reach for. It's just you. Beautiful, messy, natural you. It is underneath the cloaks you wear, the roles you play, uh, even the beliefs you may hold about how a meeting professional ought to behave. It's just you. Beautiful, messy, natural you. So being wild is having the courage to bring the gift of all of who you are to all of what you do. Make sense? having the courage to bring the gift of all of who you are to all of what you do. Now, typically, if I had a longer time, I'd give you examples of people being wild in all sorts of different uh, walks of life and different work settings and things like that. But I'm gonna fast forward instead to the point at which I often ask groups, when you're feeling wild, what words come to mind? And I ask for them to give me adjectives. And sometimes we'll use, maybe you've seen the cool word cloud thing where people type on their phones and they show you the words that they have. Or we might do a, what I'm calling a chat storm, where I say, okay, don't send it yet. Um, don't send it yet, but we do it all at once. And this is really fun rush of wild words pouring down the chat. But anyway, this is an example of one of those word clouds. And the bigger the word, the more people have typed that word. So here's our sample. And I get it. You could be looking at these wild words going, Chris, this is great. Um, we're pretty busy. And so sometimes we get there, often we don't. I get that. In fact, you probably want to show me your phones, right? Did you pick orange as your color? You want to show me that this, the whole day is blocked out and full. And so we'd love to be wild at work, and sometimes we can, but it doesn't always happen. I get that. But if you're not showing up to work or creating meetings where wild is your top priority, let's take a look at the opposites of some of the words that people have said to me over and over again as we explore how to be wild at work. So for example, if you're not feeling creative, how might you be feeling? Well, probably kind of stifled, right? If you're not feeling hopeful, this is not good. If you're not feeling spontaneous, you might feel kind of tamped down or rigid. If you're not feeling free, when well, we're talking trapped, if there isn't laughter, it's probably pretty silent. And if you're not feeling alive, that's a problem, right? Does it matter to be wild at work? You bet it does. Does it matter to create meetings or have conferences that are wild? You bet it does. Does it matter that you show up whole, present, alive, creative, and wild yourself? You bet it does. Indeed, I believe that's the way we will find our way through what we've been given right now. The amount of uncertainty and anxiety and everything that you're all familiar with, showing up as best we can wild, lined up with who we are at our core, the more we'll be able to support one another and create the events, the meetings that we need to have to help people feel connected. Now, I would submit that there are three essentials 
in order to be wild at work. Oops, I just showed you my Zoom instead of my, there we go. To be wildly present, wildly original, and wildly welcoming. And we're gonna dive in for just our few minutes today to wildly present, the practice of giving your undivided attention. Now, why does this matter? One of the places I just spoke was for a statewide summit on uh, health and well-being in the workplace. And what they found is that mental health is by far the biggest issue than anything, it leaves everything else in the dust. Mental health is it right now for how we support our employees, our colleagues, and our clients. It far surpasses the next one's way down. Mental health, it's the uncertainty, it's the anxiety, it's the relentless change, it's trying to connect through screens. And then what they're finding also is that a manager's job right now, most experts are saying they should be spending at least 50% of their time just listening, just supporting, particularly remote workers. How do we do that? Well, we're present with one another. That's how we do it. So I'd like you to meet Scrapper. Now Scrapper is this fantastic dog. She came out of the womb wanting to be a lead dog. And so she's always just had so much energy, so excited, such a fun, loving dog always eager to go. The thing you should know about all sled dogs, but about Scrapper in particular, is she loves to run. That is her happy place, loves to run. So um, sometimes what happens with dogs is that when they get to kind of middle age, maybe about seven or so, some of them start to get afraid of loud noises or storms or things like that. And that was happening for Scrapper. She was uh, just getting a little more agitated when storms came through. Now understand, Alaskan Huskies are escape artists. So she's in a pen with two other dogs with six foot high chain link fence and railroad ties buried inside the fence line. So a big storm came through and we thinking, oh boy, this is gonna be hard on her. So as soon as the storm passed, we ran out to check on her and the rest of the team and Scrapper was gone. She had managed to dig inside of the railroad tie, tunnel underneath, pop out, and go. Now, for most dogs, when they get loose, they go kind of nuts. But for sled dogs, because they just love to run, it's like a switch gets flipped and she just flies. She may come back, she may not. The bond to humans is not about how much she loves us. It's just when she's free, she just runs. In fact, Alaskan Huskies are almost the exact same DNA as wolves, far more than any domesticated canine. So when we go, when she goes wild, which I think they're such great examples, she's just off and running and gets really hyper stimulated, hyper elevated, and is no longer really in her world centered or present. So we spent the day, of course, looking all over, putting up signs, making calls. We slept out. We camped right next to the dog yard in case she came back during the night. No scrapper. Three days, three really painful days of drop everything and try to find this dog. No luck. And then thank all the powers that be. Someone drove by and said, hey, I think I saw your dog off in the farmer's field. So I took off at a run. My partner grabbed the truck, went the other way around. And I'm running and I'm running. And I see her off in the distance. So I start to slow down a bit, kind of gently saying her name, because when she's that elevated, if I was to even yell her name, she would likely just take off again, because she's just not in her body right now. So as we start to meet in the farmer's field, remember there was a big storm, right? It was right at the dip. So this big, huge mud puddle. And as I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer, and I'm thinking, mm, talking to her softly, I need to get down to her level. And the, just the, as it happened, the point where we met was in the middle of this mucky, muddy place. And I knew what I had to do. I waded in. It was about mid-shin deep. And I knelt in the mud. And I just knelt there, talking softly to her. And she would plop through the water a bit and come up to me. And, oh, I wanted to reach out and grab her so bad. But if I lunged and missed, she'd be off. So I just kept saying her name, talking softly, and she would walk up and sniff and then back off. And I think eventually she got enough of my scent and kind of that reconnection from my voice. And then I, I know, are you excited for this story? He says, I've heard it before. I know what happens. Anyway, eventually she got enough of my scent and my voice that she came up and then she's like, oh, hey, it's you. And came up and licks and hugs and tears and oh, what a happy reunion it was to get to have Scrapper back with me. And of course, when I took off running, I hadn't thought to grab a leash. So we had a very long walk back with me holding her collar, but it didn't matter. I was just so happy to have reunited with Scrapper. 
Now, to me, that is a story of wild presence. Again, the practice of giving your undivided attention. That's what she needed from me, just to stay with her. She did not need me to reach out, to grab. She just needed me almost to bear witness and believe in her while she kind of wind back down and managed to get lined up enough to reconnect with really her life in this case. This is what is called of us right now to be this way with one another. And originally, I haven't told this story all that often, but I thought, you know what? We really need it right now. This is not only a warm, fuzzy, personal story. This is how we need to be with one another at work as well. Because all of us are having times when we are just hyper-stimulated, elevated beyond belief, and not able to feel aligned, wild, centered. So to be with one another and kneel in the muck together, to be with one another, to be wildly present, because we will write ourselves. We do. We often tip over. We write ourselves as a company, as individuals, as a country, and as the world. We will write ourselves. And what we need in order to do that is to almost bear witness, if you will. And I told this story about a week ago, and I got an email from a manager saying that exactly helped because I so badly want to fix. I'm a fixer. But I knew this person doesn't need that. I'm going to have to just kneel in the muck with them until they find their way back to their own center, to their own place of being wild. Now, this isn't easy to do because we all need it. We're not only the givers of kneeling in the muck, we need to receive it as well. So it takes some work, but it's worth it. And it's worth it because when we are able to stay wildly present with one another, to be wildly original and to be wildly welcoming, we get to be a part of teams and work together in ways that feel a little bit like this. <laughs> Three dogs pulling two people using voice commands to ask them to not go this way, but to go that way. You guys, if that's possible, <laughs> surely we can find a way to communicate with one another remote if we have to, but we can do this to be wildly present, wildly original, and wildly welcoming with one another and create that kind of way in the world. I look forward to working with you in all sorts of wild ways. Thank you so much.